As the clock strikes noon, the static facade of DSA is swarmed by a sea of movement. A rush of middle schoolers anxiously escapes the confines of the classroom to embrace the sunny freedom of a fall day. It's Friday lunch again at DSA, the one time a week when students are allowed to roam free. The soccer game meanders into a nearby lunch circle. The five student tussle over a water bottle meanders into the loose boundaries of the soccer field. And a friendly dare leads to part of a banana being thrown at the boys sitting in the corner. Taken at face value, Friday lunch is a chaotic pileup of the woes of middle school. The pushing of boundaries, the discovery of self, and the need to fit in. But 30 minutes after the extravaganza began, the cacophony of middle schoolers gains order, and the cacophony of disorder is reduced to the silence of stomping on a neighbor's toe. Inside, the synchrony and harmony of middle school life awaits. This is Sancia, a seventh grader. She is studious and passionate about science and orchestra. Although reserved in class, she thrives in a small group setting. Together with her partner, she works to uncover where the ingredients of a chicken sandwich come from, while at the same time lamenting the process of creating citations. Dance class provides a welcome escape and an opportunity to move freely outside of the concrete hallways of the middle school. Guided by her teacher, Sancia practices stretches, jumps, and routines. Even as students embrace the freedom of movement, they are guided and synchronized. Six, ready, and go. Back, front, back, front, back. Yeah. Remember when you need in a circle now. Five, six, seven, and go. Back, front, back, front, back. As Sancia immerses herself in dance, fellow seventh grader Julia practices cello with five other students in the auditorium. As an advanced ensemble learning more than one instrument, Julia's group has been entrusted to practice together while their instructor, Miss Crawford, teaches in the adjacent classroom. The group is focused and calm as they practice individually. But difficulties arise when attempting to synchronize their parts. After several failed attempts, they ponder the importance of practicing their harmony. Yet the sea of empty seats before them forms a powerful reminder of their upcoming concert. And after a brief sharing of apprehension, the realization that the uneasiness over the looming performance was shared fostered the unity they needed to keep going. As the group convenes with the rest of the orchestra, the students focus on their part as Miss Crawford guides their synchrony. Visible through the sea of arms, Sancia joins in. As Julia and Sancia head to their last class, the sea of students momentarily echoes the feeling of Friday lunch. Their school day culminates in theater, where they finalize preparations for monologues and group performances. Awaiting their turn on stage, each student becomes a member of the audience, sharing notes and observations with the class as the act of writing shapes their own self-awareness. Finally, with a signal from the teacher, Reserve is challenged as students become animated by the characters that they enact. Framed between peers and performance criteria, students face the internal dare to let go. As the last class of the day concludes, anxious energy melts to relief, a reminder that breaking out of one's shell for a monologue is just one of many challenging experiences in the life of a middle schooler. For it's from the harmony of chorus practice, the chaos of Friday lunch, and the ordered synchrony of a concert that the mosaic of the middle school experience emerges. And it's these experiences that shape the perspective of students as they are pushed to embrace the improv of risk-taking, the cacophony of exchange, the stillness of reflection, and the choreography of friendship. <laughs>